W.E.B. Du Bois at this time was the editor for the Crisis Magazine, and he organized an annual education issue. And so in preparation for that, he would survey various colleges and universities. He's asking the question, are African Americans allowed into your institution of higher education? Is there equal access to education? The brother who responded shared how many African American students had graduated that year and whether they were in good standing, and she was. But then the last piece of the letter uh, is a justification for why African Americans are not allowed into the university in regular classes. Paragraph four says, we do not admit Negroes into our day classes because of the considerable number of students we have from Southern states. However, they are admitted into the law classes and the evening college classes, which are almost wholly composed of day people. There's always a justification uh, that those in power have about segregation. Um, in this case, we have the university administration making a justification based on a certain group of Southern students uh, because of their attitudes. But we know in point of fact that racism is rampant, uh, not only in the South, but in Dayton and the North as well. It was an example of systemic racism. We participated in that. It was, it was a contributing factor to perpetuate Jim Crow segregation. This represents a denial of opportunity to, to generations of people because of the color of their skin. So we were wrong as a university, gravely wrong. And on behalf of the university, I apologize. from it. Persons like myself have grown up in a culture where white privilege was taken for granted. So it's imperative for us at this time in our history to examine the culture and practices of the university from the perspective of students of color and people of color. Unless we understand that history, unless we engage the history, we are simply not in a position to do what we said we would do in our in our uh, anti-racist action plan. And what we say in the plan is that we are commi committing to understand, disrupt, and dismantle systemic racism. First step is understand. And when I think about the impact on individuals, African Americans in the community at, at, at the time, you know, I, I just have a deep sense of remorse. But I, I think if we uh, twist the question a little bit, you know, what's the impact on white students? And, and what it, the impact on white students is it's an undermining of their education. Because the reality of uh, the community itself in Dayton and the reality of the United States is it's a multiracial uh, population. And I think African-American students uh, and faculty and presence would have made a difference. We've been motivated um, for years as a university now to make progress on diversity, equity, and inclusion because that's the best way to make sure we have a strong educational environment that best positions our graduates for success because it's consistent with our values, with our, our charism as a Catholic and Marianist university. Well, I think from a Marianist and also a Catholic perspective, every human person is a child of God and deserves respect. And so we can't honor our Marianist mission and heritage without working toward diversity, equity, and inclusion. They just go hand in hand. We don't have policies like this now, but are there other things that we need to take a look at that, that, that maybe would, will put us in a better place going, going forward? She seems really impressive. Um, she was the first African-American woman to graduate from UD, as we saw in 1930. You know, as a footnote in a letter back in 1930, uh, Jesse Hathcock turned out to be much more than that. You know, obviously impact on many lives as a teacher and as a dean, 
She was deeply involved in the, in the greater Dayton community and was deeply respected. Uh, the University of Dayton granted her an honorary doctorate in 1978. And she was the first woman to have that honor. I think there's an opportunity for us to take a critical look at UD's racial history. Let's tell the story. But I think it's in that story, our, our understanding of that story, examining that story, um, is um, a critical component of us moving toward being what God is calling us to be.